Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video. I told you that conditional is so much powerful and is being used almost in every single thing that you'll be doing on the web. So having a full understanding of where the conditional potentially can be used is really, really important. So we saw a couple of them, if and else, bit more on syntactical sugar like these ternary operators. And here goes another one, which you are definitely going to enjoy. And I'm gonna give you again an example from my website, Learn Code Online. So in my website, Learn Code Online, you might have noticed that people have different privileges in the website. And of course, many, many of these major websites are designed keeping in mind the what privileges you want to give certain person and what not. For example, I get the whole privileges, I can do anything what I like, but some other people are there who are responsible for preparing the tests that we launch every single uh, weekend for free. There are people who replies to the content and there are people who consume the content. So there are different levels of these things. How do we do that? That's for another day or probably in some other course, but right now what we want to do is this one. So we want to create an application which has the following roles of the user. One is gonna have an admin role, another one is gonna have a sub-admin role. Then we got the test preps and the user. And what we are looking for here is printing out a message that admin gets full access, sub-admin gets the access to create and delete the courses, test prep gets the access for creating and deleting the test, and finally users get access to consume the content, no privileges of creating anything apart from the comments. Okay. So how can we actually do these things? Surely 100% your if and else case logic is gonna work absolutely fine here, there is no problem. But here's a better way of doing such similar thing. If you have multiple things to check out and based on that you want to provide some of the privileges or some messages, then switch in case is one such great way. Let's go ahead and try to understand how we're gonna do that. First and foremost, uh, let's go ahead and create a simple user. Let's assign it some value. So this one is gonna be, let's just say a test prep. Again, they should be exactly matched as what I'm saying here. So make sure you have the exercise file or you can just write this uh, pretty simple code. So once we have this one, then surely I can go ahead and use the if and else case conditionals, uh, check for again, everything again and again. But in this case, what makes better sense is not to use this one, but actually another conditional, which is switch in case. Let me fill it up by the default value so that we can discuss it a little bit. So switch, actually goes through with variety of cases. Here you write the key and for every single case, we match the value for that case and wherever the value actually runs, we just actually execute that only case. That's it, really simple. Again, switch is the keyword, then in the parenthesis, we put the value that needs to be evaluated and then we mention a whole lot of cases that we are having here. And the default is when nothing matches out, this is gonna be it. So let's go ahead and try this out. So what is the key here that we want to match? The key is actually the user that we want to match. What is the value? Now, if your value is something like number, maybe you're designing a rating system, then it can be one, two, three, four, five, something like that. But in this case, our value is actually a string. So I'm gonna first and foremost, we'll say admin. Then I would like to put up a console log message. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply uh, log out the message that you get the full access. So let's go ahead and write that. You get full access. There we go, that's it. Now here's the one thing that you should know. Uh, we haven't actually, we are not in a position right now to discuss it much, but sometimes you're not gonna see the break. And what break does, I'll tell you that in a second. But first and foremost, you're gonna see a lot of time the return keyword is there. The moment I write the return keyword, then the break actually automatically dims down a little bit. The return simply means whenever you're gonna hit the return, that's it. Therefore, after that, no code is going to run. So this is a common practice, but we are not in a position right now to discuss the return that will come up in the function section. Let's go ahead and remove that part and we're gonna talk more onto that. Now break allows us to not to have a fall through there. And I'm gonna show you an example of that in a second. First and foremost, we're gonna copy paste it multiple times because we got a whole lot of values. So once we have the admin, then we have this a sub admin as well, just from the top. And it gets the access to create uh, these courses and delete, of course. So we're gonna just copy and paste this one. I'm gonna save it so that it automatically shift these up. We got a couple more, so let's go ahead and copy that. And uh, paste that as well, and one more time. So after sub-admin, we have these test preps, so let's go ahead and copy them. So check for test preps, and they get the access to create and delete tests. And finally, we have got this user, and we are gonna check for user, and it gets an access to 
consume the content. There we go. And finally, the last one. Okay. So this is all what we got so far. And now the only thing that's remaining is what is the default. So when none of the cases are going to match here for admin, sub-admin, there is no case that's going to match, then we go ahead and simply run this code. For example, if the user is actually not matching with anything, we're going to just say, uh, this is actually a trial user, somebody who has registered from the email and not even has confirmed. He is actually a trial user for right now. So there we go. This is what we got. Now let's go ahead and run this code up here. So if we run this, it says gets access to create and delete tests because the user was test prep. Let's see if the user changes out to the role of user. Let's see how it works. There we go. Gets an access to consume the content. And what if it says I'm ABC? We have never said that there is a role for ABC here in our applications. So this one is always going to be a trial user. Somebody who just wants to give it a try how the platform looks like. So pretty easy. But what happens when we have something like admin? Let's go ahead and check it out. Admin. And now if I just run this one again, you're going to notice no surprises. You get the full access. But what happens if I don't put out the break as well? So if I remove these breaks or put up the comments on the break, let's go ahead and do them. There we go. And we're going to do for all of them and all of them. So notice now what happens. Let's run this code by cleaning up the things. And there we go. You get the full access. You can create courses. You can create tests and you can do this and trial users. So if we don't put out these break statement, then something happens which known as fall through. In some of the more modern languages, which are designed like a couple of years ago, they don't have this fall through because we eventually realized as a programmer, this is not a good pattern and writing this break is a very, very tedious thing to do it again and again. So no point of doing it. So in the modern languages, these break keywords are missing because of obvious reasons. And there we go. So now that you know that how these can be used and one of the use case scenarios as well, and I'm pretty sure that you, these use case scenarios are helping you to understand the role of where these can be used in one or the other way. Surely they have hundreds of other uses. I'm just trying to come up with the simplest way possible. That is fun to learn. So make sure you hit that subscribe and let's catch up in the next one.